Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's showdown slate uh, involving the game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Arizona Cardinals. I'm doing this solo today, and uh, we are going to be going live at about 6 o'clock Eastern time, where we will go over some more, you know, uh, lineup building stuff. But we're going to do a little lineup building today as well. Um, so what I'm going to do, since there are only a handful of players to go over, I am going to go through the plays and how I look at the game in general. And then we're going to build some Sabersome lineups and see what kind of stuff we come up with. Uh, this is, again, an early look. Um, but not too much, I think, is going to change between now and the game, but who knows. Uh, the big news is, and this is what I was anticipating, is that Kyle Murray is unlikely to play and DeAndre Hopkins is likely to play. So you're going to have Colt McCoy at quarterback for Arizona, which obviously, you know, makes Arizona quite different. Um, and DeAndre Hopkins is, is playing, which obviously is a big deal as well. So uh, first of all, as far as the totals and all that stuff, I, I think San Francisco remains about a 10 or 11 point favorite uh, with a total of about 43. So it implies 27 to 16 or so for San Francisco. And so I, I just caution you um to not make the mistake that people make in showdown with respect to taking the side of the game. So you have a, a game like this where it's pretty obvious to everybody who's looking that, that Arizona is going to have a very difficult time scoring. And, and also the idea is that San Francisco is probably going to want to run the ball. Um, I think if anything, there's a pretty overwhelming bias towards kind of under type plays, meaning San Francisco running game, San Francisco defense, things like that. But it's not this, it's not as overwhelming a bias as, as others. Like when Chicago was playing New England earlier in the year, then then it was a hundred percent. I still think that Arizona has that uh, reputation for allowing a lot of yards and points such that people are going to be doing some some pretty stacky type play uh, lineup builds with the San Francisco offense as well. Uh, the problem with San Francisco is that as usual, they, you don't exactly know where the, all the targets are going to go. Um, now, especially that you have McCaffrey in there, you got McCaffrey, you have um, Samuel, you have Ayuk, you have Kittle. There's a lot of options. Um, so that makes San Francisco somewhat tricky, but I think that what the majority of people are going to end up doing I'm not the majority, but I think an overwhelmingly easy thing to do is to play five San Frans and run it back with just like DeAndre Hopkins. You know what I mean? Um, or with like kind of a one shot Colt McCoy or something like that. Pause this for a second. Right. So I think there's going to be a lot of these five one builds where you play either five San Frans and run it back with Hopkins five San Frans, run it back with, with uh, Colt McCoy, maybe run it back with a Samuel or an IU. I think if any, not Samuel, IU, sorry. Um, if anything, you maybe run it back with a, with a, a real, with a cheapo for Arizona, like a Rondell Moore, maybe even, he's not even a cheapo, but maybe a one shot, or there'll be some four twos where you might have a McCoy and, 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 and Hopkins, but I think the majority of the lineups are going to be for San Fran's and two Arizona's. Don't be afraid to go the other route. That's all I'll say. You know, yes, it's much less likely for, for Arizona to put up all the numbers, but I think that relative to how often they're going to be played, I think that's probably the best EV play to, to EV uh, approach. Um, and I'll kind of leave it at that uh, as I go through the, the plays. Um, I guess I'll just start with Arizona. Um, okay. So obviously the two most logical plays are going to be, well, there are three, but are going to be DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Colt McCoy and, and James Connor. I mean, that's where the majority of the projection is going to come from. That's where the majority of the, of the work is supposed to come from. Right. I have a Connor Hopkins, so McCoy is not going to rate all that well, but just because of the quarterback, He's, he's, I imagine he's going to be that you're going to want to play him, right? Uh, he might be running for his life, which is actually good for DFS. 
So I think that McCoy, Hopkins, Connor, Rondo Moore, those those are the the obvious kind of plays. But if you want to do something uh, different, uh, uh, let me suggest uh, what's for me to be the top overall point per dollar in value play on the slate, and that's going to be Trey McBride from Arizona. Now, he's already getting some ownership, but I found that these types of plays don't get the ownership that they should. Um, they're showing 35% right now. I think it's going to be less, and uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a really, really useful cheapo to get in there. So I think Trey McBride is probably the best overall value um, on, well, certainly on the slate, but I think that you could, you could play him on Arizona and be, uh, I would say safe. I mean, if you might end up with zero, another cheapo that I wanted to bring up is Keontae Ingram. Uh, he is 2,600 at running back. And I think that he definitely has a shot as well. We talked about him almost derivative, uh, derisively, 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 whatever it is, kind of making fun of him a few slates ago. And he actually, um, uh, he actually isn't bad, you know, and, and um, he was, I think it was nine for 14 in the game we talked about. And he, you know, he's got a little bit of skill. So I don't know if you're looking for a cheapo, I think that uh, you could do worse than play someone like him. And then Greg Dorch, who's not really projecting much of anything, but, Look, I mean, it's a freaking shit show out there for Arizona. It's all hands on deck. I think that Dorch, I mean, I don't know if he's gotten any targets in, since since uh, since um, Hopkins has come back, but I mean, not really. But I mean, he was he was on people's radar earlier in the season. You know, maybe maybe they give him another shot. I think that they're coming off a game with literally zero targets. Um, I don't know. He was limited. Going into last week, I could see why they didn't play by him. I don't know if he's healthier this week. I don't know. Uh, I think that's definitely a good shot at showdown, and I'll definitely force exposure into him. Um, and in addition to that, obviously, uh, the, the kicker for Arizona. I don't even have the kicker projected yet, um, so we got to figure out. I don't know if they're oh, – so Prater would be the kicker. I don't have him in my projections yet. I will put him up there soon. And I, I guess obviously he's somewhat in play, but uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's a Prater type of slate. Uh, I think that uh, if, I don't think that they're going to be kick he kicks one or two field goals. I think that's going to be it. You know, got, when when you want like multiple field goals from a guy, probably if the team can score anyway, you know that means you're getting into the red zone or into its opponent's territory quite a bit um, where you have the luxury of choosing between kicking field goals and touchdowns. I don't know. Maybe that's a horrible take, but um, uh, that, that's what I have at least for now. Um, and okay. So on the San Francisco side, I mean, let's just, let's go over it. I mean, McCaffrey, uh, Garoppolo, Ebo Samuel, IU, guys, I already mentioned Kittle, Defense is fine. Running back, you have Eli Mitchell. I mean, none of these are particularly, you know, uh, off the wall. Kittle, I mean, all these are kind of decent. It's just a matter of how many you play and how you pair them together. You know, uh, I'm not quite getting to as much of Jawan Jennings, but it's silly for me to say he's not in playing a showdown slate. I, I would be remiss to not point out the the, the show my showdown uh, my showdown genius of all time. And that would be the once and future king of showdown, Kyle Juszczyk. And it seems so silly to even recommend a guy who's had not a single target, uh, not a single rush in 10, seven weeks. But check this out. Four targets, four targets, two targets. You know, if one of those targets is around the end zone um, and he gets in there, LFG, you know. So I I'm in there. You know, and, and listen, now that they have McCaffrey, it's, it's kind of silly to think they need a lot of running backs. Um, but again, showdown, you, it's required that you be have a little more vision. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely get a couple of him just for funsies. So all that is, is, is kind of all well and good. Um, so I, I'm going to I'm going to build I'm going to do a Saberson build just to kind of show you. I think what's the most important thing is, is figuring out what type of rules and how to kind of handle this. But just to kind of review the plays, 
think that Trey McBride from the Arizona side is the best value play overall on the slate. Um, and then I think it's kind of like the weird pivots would be maybe, well, certainly Colt McCoy. If he's only 15% on, you got to play him. But then there's Keontae Ingram as a shot. And I think Greg Greg Dorch could be could be the sneaky one. Okay, now these are guys that might get zero targets and zero snaps. I'm just warning you, but you never know. And in showdown, that's kind of kind of the theme. You just never know. And on San Francisco, everybody seems somewhat normal. Um, if anything, maybe you could just j- play a little Kyle Uzcheck just to kind of get different. But that's all fine. But let's let let's go ahead and, and build some lineups here using. Saber six. I think that's the most interesting thing to do. Let's build 150 lineups given my proje- given my projections for now. And again, mine's not going to have Prater. Actually, I'll use Prater by letting Saberson kind of put in its projection. I think. Yeah, it gets Prater in there, and and this way you also get some AJ Green, Stephen Anderson, some of these other guys that I'm not kind of getting. Robbie Anderson, and I think all these guys are somewhat in play. You know what I mean? So I think in the end, what I'll do is I'll update my projections to include these like no projected cheapos um, or no projected garbage plays just to give us other options. So let's do that. Let's build 150 lineups. Um, For now, I'm not going to make a max, uh, max salary. Actually, let's do that. Let's do that. I think that 48, eight always look pretty decent, but just to give you a sense of what more lineups look like, what better lineups look like, I'll make it 49, two. So let's like build and let's just see what they come up with. I imagine it's going to be a bunch of Trey McBride. I mean, it just projects way too well relative to his price to not get in there. So I imagine I'll get some McCaffrey, Hopkins, McBride, and Garoppolo, Samuel. You know, I, I think probably mostly four, two, five ones for San Francisco. But let's just take a look. So I actually have in captain. Samuel, well, it's actually spread out decently. Samuel, McCaffrey, Hopkins, you know, kind of spread throughout. And then in the flex, Trey McBride, about 45% owned, and pretty much all the usual guys. I, I'm not getting any. Ooh, a little Steven Anderson. There you go. 22% Steven Anderson. I like that. Kind of a it's kind of a neat pivot off of Trey McBride, if you think about it. I like that. Ooh, I definitely like that. Very strong. And and let's take a look at the the, the game stats. Uh, no, 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 not that many. I wouldn't say that many. I would say half of them were four twos, and then another twenty five percent of them were five zeros, and a full one third of them, I guess it looks like, are three threes, which is very uh, surprising to me. I guess that when you can play McBride so cheap. That that's what people are going to do. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Is that that the captain spot is really getting a lot of spread out ownership? Samuel, McCaffrey, Hopkins, Garoppolo, whatever it is. Um, no use check, huh? Boy, no no love for the use check. Oh, there it is. I'm getting two two lineups for use check in the captain. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. So I guess to summarize, oh, this is going to be a fun slate. I'm going to have so much exposure to guys that can get zero. And, and that, that's what you want. Isn't, isn't that what you want out of a showdown slate? Just to have guys that you just know are getting zero because you just never know. And in showdown, you just never know. When those guys come in and you have unique lineups, then you have the sweat. And that's all you really want in showdown is a sweat of a unique lineup that has a small, tiny chance to win. Yes, you can make the best plays and, and, and be battling the chop with 30 people. That's fine, too. But the trick to showdown is to get, get guys that seem hopeless but have a small chance. To come uh, that is heavy-duty analysis of showdown slates, but it's true. Uh, all right, I'll be on around at six to go through more of this stuff and figure out exactly how much of these bow wows I'm going uh, to be betting on. And uh, that should do it. Uh, Good luck, everybody.